Today it's time to find out can some of the off the shelf calcium hydroxide or pickling lime products perform just as good as aquarium grade Kalkwasser or even better is it just as good as USP pharmaceutical grade material and then of course give away some cool stuff at the end. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beerus TV Investigates, a weekly YouTube series which explores popular reefing theories, products, methods, what the manuals are missing, with a focus on putting them to the test, and then rate that theory based on our scale of reef fancy to reef certainty. This week we have episode two of a four-part series which seeks to continue the conversation that's been going on for the last 15 years and asking, are off-the-shelf, ungraded, or tech-graded calcium and alkalinity additives just as good as reefing additives? Just because it has a picture of a coral a fish on the front, does it really mean that it's any better? In addition to that, answer some of those questions on our new BRS Pharma line of chems. And do pharmaceutical grade materials really mean that it's any better? Or at least in a meaningful way where reefers are likely to realize incremental or functional results. In the first episode, we found there was certainly a difference between food grade and pharmaceutical grade alkalinity for those that want to use the best available option. But a simple box of Arm & Hammer food grade baking soda performed remarkably well. We also found that the tech grade option was unacceptable for a reefing application. And even one of the bulk options marketed to the reefing world was pretty marginal. So this week I think will be equally as interesting as we explore six different options of calcium hydroxide, which is often referred to as Kalkwasser in the reefing world. One popular aquarium brand we'll refer to as Aquarium One, Brightwell's Kelk Plus Two, and BRS Pharma. Another reefing bulk option we'll refer to as Bulk One, some food grade Mrs. Wages pickling lime, and a true bulk option with food grade Mississippi lime. Just like last week, there are two options simply labeled Aquarium One and Aquarium Bulk One. These are what I believe to be some of the most popular retail options out there. Just like last week, it's important to me to respect the balance between respect for the community's desire for knowledge and respect for those in the industry who are working hard for the community. It's really up to the individual companies to decide for themselves if they want to make that type of information public. I'm just not comfortable making that decision for them. That said, Brightwell is in this for the long haul. They told me regardless of the results, they wanted to not just be included in this, but they also wanted me to share the results regardless of what they say. So this is how we're going to test the materials. I collected some of the samples from our shelves, ordered a couple that we don't stock here, went to a big box hardware store for the pickling lime, and ordered the Mississippi lime from a local chemical supplier. We're going to first take some visual assessments by mixing up 1.33 grams in a liter of RODI water and assessing clarity, total volume of water and solubles, and potency after a handful of minutes of mixing. A visual assessment will only tell you so much, but honestly, if you can see it with a naked eye, it's not a trace element. If it turns muddy brown, rusty red, or has a large amount of insoluble crud at the bottom, I don't really care what the ICP MS testing says. I'm personally not going to use it in my reef tank. There are just too many other affordable and safe options out there to gamble an often multi-thousand dollar investment in my reef tank and commitment to my pets to use something I can see with the naked eye is dirty. Next, we sent the six samples to NSL Analytical to be tested with ICP, MS, and other methods for 21 parameters. This is 16 individual parameters and a group of heavy metals reported together. This type of testing should provide a solid window into the suitability for a reefing application. Before I dive into this, I'd like to share what I personally expect to see in all this. The Beerus Pharma is sourced as a low aluminum USP grade, so I anticipate that it will perform the best of the bunch. And straight up, I wouldn't be surprised if we found all the rest to perform about the same. Meaning a really limited difference between the pickling lime and those with a fish or coral on the label, calcium hydroxide is a pretty common chemical, and I think food grade is likely an acceptable option. Okay, getting to it, all of these patterns are visually white and to me look virtually the same. The BRS Pharma is wider than the others, but the difference is pretty difficult to see. The only real notable difference is the BRS Pharma is a denser option with a free-flowing crystalline powder, meaning you don't have the same talc-like poof when handling it, which greatly reduces the chances of breathing in the powder. However, because of that, it does dissolve a bit slower. After mixing them up and allowing them to settle overnight, the Beerus Farmer has almost no undissolved material at the bottom and the liquid is clear. All of the others had a significant amount of precipitate or sediment at the bottom of the settling cones. Most notable was the other aquarium bulk option which had a brown tint or a dirty appearance to the sediment. Similar to that, all of the samples other than the other aquarium bulk option eventually settled out pretty clear. 
The aquarium bulk one maintained a lot of small suspended particulate matter and didn't look like it was going to continue to clear. This is somewhat concerning because those suspended particles and potentially the contaminants they contain will likely be dosed to the reef tank. This also seemed like a good time to test the potency of the 1.33 grams of calc added to each sample and I can say I think they all came out fairly identical with the electrical conductivity of 5.32 to 5.63 ms, well within the range of mixing and measurement error. So all in all, just reviewing the visual observations, the BRS Pharma mixed up with significantly less impurities at the bottom. The other bulk option was cloudy with a brown precipitate, but the others had limited other visual differences, and they mixed up virtually to the same potency. Moving on to the analytical testing, we're going to cover each parameter, highlighting the highest and lowest levels in each case. I will stop for a quick explanation when appropriate, but the real review will come at the end. I'll put a link in the full report at the video description for anyone that would like to review it. Note there are certified results here which go largely as low as one part per million, as well as estimates which go into the part per billion, because it later gives a closer window into basically the same results, particularly those that read zero or near. We're going to use those for today's review, but the information is there for anyone to review either. As I go through them, note the colors green means they performed the best, red the worst, and yellow meaning they weren't the worst, but they're still high enough to garner consideration. All the examples had some acid insolubles, Brightwell with the most at 5,000 parts per million, and Mississippi Lime with the least at 1,900. I'd say all of them had the same meaningful level of water insolubles, but the aquarium one did the best, and Mississippi Lime had the most. Looking at the aluminum, I'm glad to share my initial thoughts were correct, and the Beerus Pharma had zero aluminum, and the others ranged in the four to 500 parts per million range, with aquarium bulk one having the highest at 580 parts per million. Looking at arsenic, Mississippi lime was the best with 0.02, and the aquarium bulk one option was the worst with 0.7. With boron, the aquarium bulk one was again the worst with eight parts per million, and Mrs. Wages was the best with 0.4. Now looking at calcium content, I would say they're all largely the same, but Mrs. Wages had the most and Brightwell had the least. On copper, BRS Pharma did the best at 0.5 parts per million, and aquarium bulk one was the highest with one part per million. BRS Pharma was also the lowest iron at 1,800. Brightwell and aquarium bulk one tied for the most at 2,300. Testing heavy metals, which includes eight combined elements with cadmium, lead, barium, chromium, selenium, silver, arsenic, and mercury, BRS Bulk Pharma was the best with 0.47. All the rest had between 18 and 22 parts per million, with aquarium bulk one having the most. All the samples had zero mercury, and all of them had extremely low lithium, but BRS had the highest with 0.8, and Mrs. Wages was the best with 0.2. Testing magnesium, Beerus Pharma was the best at 70 parts per million. The rest were all over 2,000, with Mississippi Lime having the highest at 3,400. Beerus Pharma tested out zero phosphate, while all the other samples were in the 40 to 50 parts per million range, with Aquarium Bulk 1 having the highest. Beerus Pharma was the only one with zero lead, and Mississippi Lime had the highest at 0.5 parts per million. Beerus Pharma was also the lowest silica at 22 parts per million. The rest were in the multiple thousands. Aquarium 1 had the highest at 2,900 parts per million. All of the samples were low in tin, but Mrs. Wages had the lowest at 0.1 and Brightwell at 0.6. Last but not least, BRS had zero zinc and Aquarium Bulk 1 had the highest with 15 parts per million. Okay, so that's the entire list, and it's probably a lot easier to digest by looking at all of them all at once and taking a quick glance at who performed the best and worst in each category. You can see most performed pretty darn well. Looking at this, the first thing to note is not all the contaminants share the same level of concern. In fact, some could be misinterpreted as beneficial, like magnesium. Fact is, I don't think a single one of us is concerned about a tiny amount of magnesium in our tanks, and even levels as high as 3,400 here are just not a concern. The reason that we're looking at some of these elements is because when they're at higher levels like this, it's a fairly strong indication that the source material is a less processed mined or evaporated product, meaning the quality of the material may vary quite a bit. It is very much dependent on the quality of the particular vein of raw materials being mined or collected at the time. 
Same thing with zinc, iron, or boron. Many reefers actually dose these elements, but that said, like magnesium levels, they're also indications of other impurities we may not be testing for. Also, just because some reefers dose these elements, they don't dose them in uncontrolled amounts. So in the end, I'm not overly concerned about very small amounts, but if you give me a choice, I'd personally prefer the lowest levels of all uncontrolled contaminants because it is representative of the entire quality picture. The first step is always to rule out any we deem to be unacceptable for a reefing application. In this case, I don't think that's any of them. Other than the BRS Pharma, they all perform pretty darn close to each other. The Aquarium Bulk 1 option does have a lot of red where it performed the worst in almost half of the measurements, but it really wasn't drastically worse than most of them, at least not in a way that I would exclude using it. However, it's not the cheapest either, so I can't imagine why many people would use it. I think it's pretty easy to identify the BRS Pharma as the overall lowest impurity option. The most notable considerations is the zero aluminum versus the four to 500 in the other samples. Lowest copper, around 40 times lower heavy metals, a fraction of the magnesium, zero phosphate versus 40 to 50, 22 silica versus multiple of thousands. Without considering cost, I think it's safe to say almost everyone would select the BRS Pharma. Outside of that, looking at the rest, I have to say that you see a lot of yellow here, which means some of these contaminants are fairly high across the board, and in almost every meaningful way, I think all of them are going to perform almost the same in the reef aquarium. I would personally use whichever one was the cheapest readily available option. So answering today's two questions, starting with are off-the-shelf ungraded food or tech-graded calcium and alkalinity additives just as good as reefing additives? I think I'm going to give this one an 8, which is close to reef certainty, because while the food grades were nearly identical to some options and even outperformed one of the bulk aquarium options, the food grades were significantly lower quality than one reefing option. Then to the next question, do pharmaceutical grade materials really mean that it's any better? I guess I'm still going to give this one an A and more of a reef certainty than not and the manufacturing facility and material standards that come with this type of grading are likely to provide a higher quality product but I still don't think that we've demonstrated that the results always apply to a reefing application. Related to that, the one thing I'd like to point out here is most reefers are going to create a lime water solution by dissolving a small portion of kelp like two teaspoons or less in a gallon of water and dose that to the tank. This creates a very high pH and many of the contaminants that we discussed today will actually precipitate out of solution and settle out the bottom where they're unlikely to be dosed to the tank. So the calc in some way is self-purifying some of the contaminants we discussed and won't be real issues. It may be acceptable to use lower quality materials in this case. That said, it isn't the case that all undesirable contaminants will permanently precipitate out and it assumes that you never accidentally dose the settled powder or suspended particles to the tank, which depending on how long you go between cleaning is now essentially concentrated contaminants. As long as it's affordable, I assume there are many reefers who would prefer to just skip the contaminant issue from the beginning by simply using a material that doesn't contain them. That said, price absolutely does matter, so I think it is worthwhile to take a look from that angle as well. I'll share both by weight as well as a quick tank example, where a 100 gallon tank that consumes a full DKH every day and just shy of a teaspoon of caulk a day, which we weighed out at 2.6 grams a day or 78 grams of kelk wasser a month. So starting with BRS Pharma in a four pound bag, BRS is $7.50 a pound, which equates to $1.29 a month for that fairly high demand 100 gallon tank. In just over a four pound container, Aquarium One is $9.76 a pound, which equates to $1.68 a month. Brightwell's Kelk Plus Two is $11.25 a pound in a four pound container, which is $1.93 a month. The other aquarium bulk option is $8.49 a pound or $1.46 a month. Really the difference between all of the aquarium brands is pretty insignificant when you look at a reasonable monthly usage. However, I was able to find a one pound bag of Mrs. Wages pickling lime at a large hardware store for $2.86 a pound, which is pretty darn cheap and 49 cents a month. Be aware that it can be hard to find locally, so you might spend a significant amount of time and cash driving around to find it, but almost every market will have it in a hardware store or farm type supply in the canning aisle. You can find it online, but it's often five to 10 bucks a pound, which makes it significantly less attractive. 
Now from a cost perspective, the real win will be a 50 pound bag of food grade Mississippi Vitacal Lime, which can be as low as 50 cents a pound or like a dime a month. But you'll need to find a local chemical supply company which will open an account for you, which is not always the easiest process. You can find it online, but after shipping, it's almost always 120 bucks or more for 50 pounds, which is the same cost as the Mrs. Wages. And to be frank, 50 pounds is several lifetimes worth for most reefers. So again, the one pound bag of Mrs. Wages seems to be more attractive if you can find it in your area. In the end, I think this ended up almost exactly like last week with for about a buck a month, there's a pretty clear option which contains significantly less impurities. There's also a usability advantage in the fact that it's a free flowing crystalline powder which is much less likely to get airborne than the standard talc like Kalkwasser poof. There are also a couple of legit lower cost options if you want to reduce the monthly cost of owning the tank by as much as possible. I personally think Mrs. Wages being the most viable option for most reefers. Before we close this out, I want to remind everyone what this testing will and won't do. There's no universally agreed upon appropriate level for many of the parameters that we tested other than that something capable of maintaining natural seawater parameters is best. Outside of maintaining ocean levels, there isn't a definitive answer to how much is too much aluminum, heavy metals, or any other element other than higher levels are almost certainly undesirable. We're just looking to evolve the conversation with additional data in an attempt to identify what's best for our own individual needs. That means weighing product quality with usability and cost. The net of that equation will be different for each person. So in the next episode of this series, we're taking on magnesium purity. And I can tell you right now, behind the scenes, magnesium is one of the harder elements to source in qualities appropriate for the reef tank. It's going to be very interesting to see what everyone thinks, because I'll share right now that we did not come out as the absolute best. So this week, we're going to give away five of those ICP test kits from Triton again. I think it's fun for everyone to be able to do this type of testing at home as well. So head on over to the site, click on specials and deals, then free stuff to sign up. This topic really is one I hope everyone shares their thoughts on. I'm personally interested in what everyone uses for Kelkwasser and why. As always, if you value what we're doing here, let us know with that quick thumbs up. And if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button and notification bell because we release new content like this every week. See you next week with another BRS TV Investigates.